love turkeys. I got that feeling deep down in my innards again. Gotta spew out to you that verbal diarrhea. Join me, won't you? Okay, so this is episode two of season two, back from a long fucking break, right? Last video we did like 12 inch shit that I found since I've been uh, missing off of the YouTube. This week we're gonna show off some seven inches and singles and bullshit. Fat stack of fun to get through, mainly punk and hardcore shit, so let's get down to business. Alright, we're gonna go through these from oldest release date to most recent release date. The oldest record in this haul today came out of Boston in 1978. It's a single by the group La Peste. Better Off Dead and Black are the two songs included, and it's on Black Records. Three-piece punk band inspired to start going after they uh, seen the Ramones go, by their own accounts. And the A-side on here, Better Off Dead, is a fucking straight up 70s punk Killed by Death style fucking classic. Hot fucking tune. Lyrically has a somewhat creepy I'm into young girls vibe, which does not rule, but musically it's a fucking winner. B-side Black is only okay. Slower tune, darker feel. It's kind of like talking instead of singing on it. Better off Dead's a ripper though. Hey, as always, there'll be links in the description for everything I'm talking about here, as long as it's on YouTube, so you can uh, click on that shit and fucking get an idea of what it sounds like. Okay. Up next from 1980, the year of my birth, Yawn Products presents the Oscillators. Marilyn Brown and Ebo on the B side. This is somewhat amateur, but highly enjoyable British indie punk kind of shit. It's got comped on the uh, Teenage Treats line of fucking comps, you know, so it's like closer to the experimental wavy side of punk than the Sex Pistols Dead Boys side of punk shit, you know. Kind of reminds me of like a mixture of the early wire shit with like uh, early television personalities kind of stuff. Fucking super random find. This one does not turn up a lot, especially in the US. And I got it off of somebody that found it in a fucking estate sale in Missouri with like no other punk records whatsoever. They didn't know what the fuck it was. I got a fucking sick price on it. The cover is literally just a uh, folded up piece of paper. But other than some uh, wear on the top edge there, it's in real nice shape for its age. And if you see here, this copy is actually signed to Leslie with love from Gregory. Presumably that'd be Gregory Peckery, the guitar player, who strangely enough mentions he does the guitar pickup and autographs. So anyway, happy to find this fucker. This is the green sleeve. It comes in like two or three other color sleeves. Cool, random find. That's some weird DIY punk shit from back in the day. Super cool. Up next is a record that has eluded me for years. The first single by the Chesterfield Kings. I Ain't No Miracle Worker backed with Exit 9. This came out of Rochester, New York in 1981 on the Great Living Eye Records. Rochester, New York is my hometown. That's where I grew up. And I remember as a little ass kid all the way up until I was fucking older seeing their singer Greg working at the fucking Great Great House of Guitars. Well, Greg worked in the fucking record side of it and then Andy who's also in the band worked on the instrument side of it right but Greg always left a real impression from when I was long he was like a fucking real rock and roll motherfucker man with like a uh, New York doll kind of slant to his fucking dress code dude was super cool still is still putting out music also on guitar on this one fucking Rick Kona man dude's fucking cool as shit I met him a little bit later once I was old enough to get into the bars and shit. Good dudes. Anyway, this is our first single, which even though I lived in that town was still fucking real hard to come by, man. I found most of their other shit while I was there, but this one had always eluded me. But finally, I got my copy. Chesterfield King's easily one of the fucking best bands of the 80s garage, 60s throwback scene. Fucking hot rocking band. Killer fucking vocals drenched in attitude. A side's a take on the Brogues tune. B side covering the herd. Both killer versions. After this, they wrote a bunch of their own shit too. That's also great. Before this, Greg had a couple more punk rock sounding bands like the Distorted Levels, Mean Red Spiders, Star Babies. Dude's done lots of cool shit over the years, man. Put out zines. Fucking top notch collector of shit. And the Kings, man, they fucking recorded with Johnny Thunders, fucking DD Ramon. The fucking hometown heroes yeah big thanks to vinyl conflict for giving me a fucking sweet deal on this thing 
Up next, also released in 1981, Virginia's own The Zits. You got Sick On You backed with Beat Your Face and a totally blank back cover. This is some goofy teenage kill by death kind of punk shit. This kind of reminds me of the trend from Syracuse, except for this one has like way more over the top super punk lyrics, right? About barfing on people and shit. It's almost like the trend are like a middle school band and the zits are a high school band. They're just a, a little more over the top lyrically. Couple of real wise guys on Olympic records. Look at on this side, they are just the zits. But on this side, they are the phenomenal zits. Fun stuff. I think this was comped on one of the Bloodstains comps at some point. And there is a fairly recent fucking LP collection that has this single on it and a bunch of other shit by them that I think came out not too long ago. So you should be able to grab that for a pretty decent price, I would expect. Another one I've been looking for for some years, man, that almost never even pops up on fucking Discogs or anywhere. Barbed Wire and the Fences. This came out of Detroit on Fence Post Records in 1982. Barbed Wire and the Fences are like a dark, female-fronted, synth-punk kind of band. A bit of a death rock feel at times. Spooky, moody, but still fucking punk rock shit. Not straight up goth, you know, it's fucking great. I don't really know a hell of a lot about this band other than what I've said here. Four songs, every one of them is great. I'd never even heard of these guys until I got this fucking book here. The Flex Discography of North American Punk, Hardcore, and Power Pop 75 to 85. This is just book one, A to M. There's a second book that's equally as fucking thick. I don't know if these are still available or not. I got it a couple years ago, probably. But it just has a ton of fucking random records. Some you've heard of, some you ain't heard of, and a quick little fucking write-up on them. So that's where I first heard of this barbed wire record. It sounded fucking cool. I'd never heard it, never fucking saw it for sale. If it ever popped up, it was way more fucking money than I wanted it to be. But finally, after some years, one popped up on eBay, um, had a make offer option. I fucking lowballed them and got it, man. Score. Score! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up next, also from 1982, but this one from the United Kingdom. Drongos for Europe. This is the Eternity 7-inch, three tunes. Hell number six. This was the final release of the Drongos, like, classic early 80s lineup. After this one in 82, I don't think they put out anything else until, like, 1990 or something. So a big break there. But this is right up with their classic shit, right? I don't like it quite as much as the Death's Career EP, but it's real fucking good still. This is on the fucking Magnificent Inferno label. This is actually the last Inferno record I needed. Now I got everything this label put out. There's only, like, fucking seven or eight of these releases. Look at the fucking label, is awesome. But they're all good, man. They put out the Verrukers, they put out Criminal Class, they put out Dead Wretched, and they put out fucking Drongos for Europe. On this release, Drongos give us that classic UK 82 sound. The vocals are more on the melodic side, uh, something maybe along the lines of subhumans or instigators kind of shit. But musically, it's a little more no future Riot City sounding than those bands. So it's a sweet mix. Drongos for Europe, cool band. Finally snagged myself a copy of this fucking solid gold ripper that's been fucking sitting there taunting me on my wallet for fucking 20 some years. But now at last one is mine. This is the fucking Neos with the Hasabagets, the Margin Brain, Squeezy P. This is a 1983 US pressing on Rat Cage Records. Originally came out in 1982 on a Canadian label. On here you are gifted 14 songs in about 13 minutes of super fast, especially for 1982, super fast, wild and crazy, ripping and shredding, kick-ass, hardcore punk rock. You get a bonus pusshead party monster. Like I said, this shit is loose and wild and crazy, but it still throws in a good chunk of fucking catchy ass melodies here and there. This is their second EP. I'm still looking for their first seven inch. Big ol' insert that if you look closely, not only does it have the lyrics, they also wrote out the fucking sheep music so you can play along with the Neos. I don't know that I've seen that on any record before, much less some crazy hardcore shit. Learn that shit. Little bonus trivia co-produced by the dude from No Means No. The fucking Martian brain squeeze, man. Ah! Hot shit coming at you from Victoria, 
British Columbia. Let's hop on the ferry out of Victoria for a lovely hour or two cruise over to Vancouver and check out the first record by the Bill of Rights. No rights, no chance. Look at these fuckers, I kinda love this guy. I wonder where he's from, I like him. Anywho, came out on No Rights Records, 1984. And the Bill of Rights give us three tunes of enjoyable, though not exceptional, third tier 80s hardcore punk shit, which is not a put down, I love that kind of shit. The first song kind of gives me a slight fucking Chelsea feeling, but like by way of channel three, how's that mixture for you? It's a good mixture. And the whole thing really has kind of a fucking Mystic Records vibe to me. Say hello to the boys in the band. They got a fucking fan club and everything. Check out there, somebody fucking used some whiteout to correct the fucking uh, phone number. I'm wondering if that's on all of them or a later edition or how that works. I didn't notice that till right now. Bill of Rights, also released in 1984. Dayton, Ohio's Toxic Reasons gave us God Bless America. It's out on T Reason Records, which must be their own imprint of this Skysaw Records. And may I just say that this is some fucking top-notch 80s punk rock shit. Three great fucking tunes. Hugely underrated band. I know they're not totally obscure and unknown, but I feel like their name should be bigger than it is, man. These guys put out a ton of great shit. With above average fucking songwriting and playing and production, this fucking shit is good, man. It's real good. If you're hip to Toxic Reason shit, the stuff on here sounds closer to uh, the Kill by Remote Control stuff than the Within These Walls LP. Good shit. Up next, kind of a fucking odd one by a band I was not that familiar with, but ended up being fucking radical. This is a promo single by Spanish hardcore band TDEK. Like I said, it's a promotional single on Phono Music, 1985, pressed up in Spain. The two songs are Sierras Mecanicas and El Fin. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with this band. This is the only record I got by them, but it's a fucking killer, and I'll definitely be hunting for more of their shit in the future. From what I can tell, they're one of the bigger names in 80s Spanish hardcore punk. They played from like 1984 to 1990, put out a bunch of shit. Pretty good stuff. The A side kind of alternates between like fast hardcore punk shit and this like slower, tough, hammering, plodding fucking riff. Then a couple times there's this dude just like yelling like, ah, ah, in the background. It's pretty rad. B-side is more energetic, hardcore punk shit, man. Good stuff. I'll be looking for more from TDEK. This next one I found in the wild at one of my local shops at some point over the summer. The Mystic Super 7 Sampler number 2. This came out of California in 1985. The much loved, hated, maligned, and collected Mystic Records. And this is a good splattering of mid 80s California hardcore punk kind of shit. You've got better known names like Dr. No and a very young No Effects. Some Mystic regulars like Rat Pack and Doggy Style. And the Insolence. This is San Diego's insolence that's usually spelled with a T-S at the end. They use a C-E on this one. I don't know if that changed at some point or if fucking Mystic just fucked it up. Then you got these other two bands, Party Doll and The Wallflowers, who never ended up putting anything else out besides a couple comp appearances. The Party Doll song on here is some pretty cool death rocky female fronted punk shit. And I kind of wish a record did come out by them. The Wallflowers record, despite the promising would-be cover art, their song on here sucked, so no major loss. Everything else is fucking good to decent fucking 80s hardcore punk shit from California, though. I always snatch up this Mystic shit when it presents itself, because I'm into this kind of shit. Blue Vinyl, classic Mystic Skull. Always nice when something cool pops up locally. This next record... Well, really, the next couple have some cover art that just speaks to me that I simply cannot leave in a shop if I see it sitting there. Look at the fucking punk rock biker study hall artwork on this fucking thing. This is Philadelphia's D-Control with the Born to be Wild EP. Came out on D-Control Enterprises in 1986. And if you're wondering, yes, they really do cover Born to be Wild on here. 
For real. And you know, it is what it is. It's a little bit of a sped up 80s punk version of Born to be Wild. It's actually not that bad. I know a lot of people are sick of Born to be Wild because it got overplayed for your whole fucking life. But the fact of the matter remains that Steppenwolf is fucking cool. And when they came out with the album back in the fucking day, it was one of the toughest songs ever. So I'm actually not mad at this cover. More sweet punk biker art on the insert. The artwork was all done by the bass player. It's actually pretty decent shit. Sweet punk collage on the other side of the insert. Pretty righteous. Motorhead shirt and white guy afro. Not too shabby. So Born to be Wild on the A side. The B side has two jams. Joe Blow is probably my favorite song on here. Pretty rad 80s punk rock shit. Even though the singer sounds like he's holding back some like cheeseburger beer burps at times. I still kind of dig it. The last song this doomsday is only okay. Not a fucking great record, but I kind of love it anyway. I know they got at least one or two LPs out that I'll probably hunt down someday because I think they're pretty cheap. No regrets on this purchase. On the sleeve, we got a fucking uh, name and contact number for the group, which is cool. Maybe I'll try and give Lenny a call later, see if I can get him to come play my birthday party. That would be fucking sick. Punk Rock Bikers, pretty cool. More weird and cool cover art that is just right up my alley. This time out of Tampir, Finland. CNT with the Middle A High EP. 1986 Stigma Records. CNT is a cool band. This is a red record and it's cheap. This guitar player was in Cadgers, Ristatat, fucking Kohu 63, right? And this is a red little mid 80s project that he did. I'm pretty sure this is the only thing they put out. It it opens up with a kind of misleading instrumental number, but then straight blasts you into fucking five discordant bursts of rough, tough, fast, kick-ass finish hardcore punk rock shit. Pissed and savage. And holy hell, if you want to talk about album covers that I simply can't leave in the shop, take a look at this fucking beauty. Ideals. The poor man ZZ Top. Oh boy. They just done gone and did that, man. They did it. How could I say no? How? Look at him up there. Frank Baird. Look at him. Mr. T says boogie. What's not to like here? Anywho, the ideals were an Austin band. Put this out in 1986 on Matako Missouri Records. And what we got here is like some Texas countrified and bluesified punk rock shit. There's a couple fast punk tunes. There's like a sped up zany country punk tune and some irreverent drunken blues rockers. It really is kind of like a shittier poor man ZZ Top. And I use the word shittier with love and respect. I'm down with ideals. You should be too. This is a really good and again really cheap fucking 80s punk record. And Sweden's only entry into the fucking video today. Pubble Mobile with the Imagination EP. This came out on Svala Records in 1986. And these guys play a real fucking cool mid-paced 80s punk sound. Kind of along the lines of like uh, DOA and Toxic Reason somewhere in there. They've got like pretty gruff vocals but plenty of melody in the tunes. We don't have side A and side B. We have the homicide and the suicide. The second song on the A side is Sacred Gun. Kind of fucking slips in some spooky keyboards on the chorus part. I like all four songs. Good record. And well worth picking up if the opportunity presents itself. Headed back over to Vancouver, British Columbia for Canada's last fucking entry into today's video, The Spores with Narcs in My Pants. Criminal Records, 1986. I'm rather fond of this one. It's top notch, funny punk as they used to say. Not generic in the least, full of personality and fucking fun. They got like above average guitar work, a somewhat unique sound, a little bit wacky, but damn, it's a really good listen. I'll be looking for more shit from the spores. It's my only one so far. I know they got some other bullshit out there, but there's a good one. All right, back over to our friends in Finland for this 1987 various artist collection, Tenvuota Myohaminen, or something like that. Fucking top-notch super punk mohawk kiss cover. And this is an enjoyable collection of fucking mid-80s finished punk and hardcore shit. Various styles are represented. 
pretty much all in the punk and hardcore range except for the dorian gray track is kind of on a gothy trip but you got good tracks by maho needs it euthanasia kumi christus and fucking masudan tuli voices excuse my pronunciation again i'm trying man got a cool little insert booklet very nice Always a nice touch there. Here's some labels for you. I like punk comps. Up next, recorded in Boston in 1989, released in 1990, Gigi Allen, The Troubled Troubadour. This is Gigi Acoustic with some slide guitar accompaniment. Came out on Mountain Records, Red Vinyl. This one would have been released while he was in prison. Got some Gigi artwork on there. I don't know, man. Outside of like the fucking super early jabber shit, Acoustic GG is some of my favorite shit by him. It's fucking dark, sparse, ultra depressed and death obsessed. Who could forget hits like When I die, put that bottle in my hand. Of all the years on earth, it was my only friend. Or the timeless feel-good classic, Sitting in This Room. Sitting in this room. I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. In all seriousness though, man, these are some fucking heavy lyrics and some dark tunes, man. A lot of people write GG off because he was a fucking scumbag, but dude had some songs. And for these three songs, he's like a fucked up junkie on a big Hank Williams kick. You'll have to excuse my guitar playing back there. I'm no guy, man, dude. But whatever. All right, only a couple more. This next one came out in 1991 from the Oakland band Anger Means. Anger Means would have been uh, closely associated with the uh, early 90s California fucking uh, Gilman Street fucking crew, right? Thinking Monsula and Fuel and Filth and shit like this, right? Produced by Kevin Army, who produced a lot of the Lookout Records shit. And out on Skeen Records, which is a label out of Minnesota, but did do a lot of stuff for that California scene. I know they put out shit by like Green Day and Jawbreaker and crap like that. But Anger Means is a little harder than that shit. Anger Means is like a mixture of Black Flag kind of shit and like DC Revolution Summer kind of shit. Probably a big influence from the Fugazi Rites of Spring. Obviously Ignition, who they likely got their name from. Dig this record, it kind of fucking sticks to the more angrier side of that stuff you know the hardcore side of that shit it's a cool record from a pretty cool scene that we'll explore more on this channel eventually it's the only anger means record glad to have it next from 2003 released on hellcat records this is joe strummer and the mescaleros with their coma girl picture disc seven inch Joe Strummer, of course, the frontman for the legendary Clash. And this tune, Coma Girl, is the first song off of his final album with the Mescaleros by the name of Streetcore. Unfortunately, released shortly after his death. Coma Girl is also one of my favorite fucking songs off of that album. An album that is great the whole way through. Those couple records he did with the Mescaleros are really nice. I recommend them all. But Coma Girl is some fucking top-notch Joe Strummer fucking rock and roll shit, right? Just a fucking little dash of reggae sprinkled in at the right fucking time. But a full-on sing-along rocker in true Joe Strummer fucking style. Besides a live cover of Blitzkrieg Bop, Cool little record from one of the larger than life fucking figures in this punk rock shit that we all love so much. That Mescalero shit is getting a little harder to find, man. There's still one of the LPs I need to fucking grab to get the OG copies, of course, because you know that's what I'm into. But that's all good shit, man. Joe was sounding real good at the end. Rest in peace, buddy. All right, I'm going to add one last fucking bonus record into show today. This just came in the mail from a super cool band out of Rochester, New York. This is not a 7-inch. This is a 12-inch EP, but I thought I'd stick it in here because I don't know the next time I'm going to do a fucking like vinyl fine fucking collection update kind of video. Probably get back on my fucking regular trip after these two. So now's the time to show this. This is the debut 12-inch EP by The Living Room. It's a 45 RPM, six-song fucking EP. And this just came out this year on 20 Blood Records. 
And this is like real pretty sad music. Really well done. Think like uh, Mark Lanigan, Black Heart Procession, Angels of Light, maybe later period Swans. Little bits of Nick Cave and fucking Leonard Cohen sprinkled about. Makes for a fine brew. You got like dual male, female vocals going pretty much the whole time, like going word for word with each other. And it comes off really well. Their voices mix pretty good together. As an added bonus, that homie G. Wilcox throws in some Hume, which is like the Tuvan style throat singing that adds another fucking dimension to the tunes, man. Pretty red. All right, full disclosure, Greg Wilcox is my brother. He plays in this band. Paul Wilcox, my other brother, makes this shit. Eric Witowski, friend of the family. I've known him forever. Fucking Jay Moon on drums, man. I first met that dude when I was playing in my high school punk band, The Dents, and he had a fucking band, Danny Down and the Syndromes. We did a bunch of shows together in the 90s. Fucking Danny Down and the Syndromes was awesome. I still got those demo tapes. Good shit. I hate Chucky, he's so stupid, he's so boring, he's so scary. Cheers to all y'all. But despite that connection, this is some high quality shit. My brother and Eric have been in bands together for like a lot of years now and a bunch of different bands and a bunch of different sounds. And I can wholeheartedly say that this is easily one of their best efforts, easily one of Eric's fucking best vocal performances. And they've produced... A really cool record that's like really enjoyable, relaxing music to clean up the scene of a grisly murder to. I recommend you check it out. I'll have fucking links below to their band camp where you can preview the tunes and order it if you dig it. So check that shit out. Check all this shit out. There's all the links there, man. Give stuff a listen. Maybe something will fucking tickle your fancy. Your little fancy nuts. Get a little tickle on the fancy nuts. <laughs> uh, whatever. What, you don't like music? All right, babies. That's all I got for today. It's been real swell going through this stack of fun. I hope you fucking found something new to check out. That's what I do. I try to fucking listen to something every single day that I ain't never fucking heard before. And then if it's good, we try to get the record later. Anyhow, much love to all y'all. I'll be back fucking uh, sometime soon with some other kind of shit. So fucking see you later. Pfft. <laughs>